I'm Jet Dotson. I'm a filmmaker and surf photographer, and uh, I'm featured here on the Frame Network. And stay tuned for some cool stuff. So yeah, we're gonna head down there, so cool. I'll probably see you guys right. Are you guys gonna be on the left side? Yeah, just surf the point. Cool. To the left side of the point. Well, that was a sick shot that you got him. Oh, yeah, yeah, the one yeah. She's stoked too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she tagged herself in it. You know, I, I usually just go by myself, so having you guys there was kind of fun. You know, you jumped in the water with me, and uh, you know, it's pretty cool. It was, um, it was definitely cold. <laughs> yeah, so most of the time, it depends on my mood. I like to go out, you know, and, and shoot with them in the water. A lot of the surfers, and yeah, but I usually have a wetsuit, and uh, today, uh, I normally, you know, today was kind of just like a normal day, except for the waves. We had a nice swell come in today, so that was nice. Uh places to shoot it's I've been everywhere I've been in Hawaii you know I've been to up the coast down the coast San Diego uh, but this is my home and this is my spot and <laughs> I love it so tell me about yourself where did you start getting into this industry what's your your story as to how you got here well that's a long story <laughs> um, I guess I, you know, I started shooting film back, you know, when I was 16, and uh, doing a lot of uh, skate videos, a lot of sports, just with my friends, having fun. And um, as I got older, I started getting into visual effects and trying to do experimental projects where I would add matte paintings and elements. And so I had to learn the aspects of photography, um, just the minimal parts, and in Photoshop. And so combining video and film and 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 pho photography, I was able to create these worlds and became kind of a passion. I got a little better here and there, but the only thing that kept me from keep going any further was, you know, the cost of the camera, you know, it's really expensive. So I used what I had and shot a music video for Disney Channel, and that was kind of when um, my career blew up because I got the opportunity to work with, you know, good crew, good camera, and uh, after that it was just easy icing on the cake. Um, I started working on uh, feature films, doing visual effects mm -hmm. for a couple of years. A lot of technical aspects, like I uh, worked on Avatar, doing uh, holograms. Um, so, all, you know, you combine all this technical work I've done and you add, you know, my passion for surf photography. So, you know, my head kind of has too many ideas sometimes. That's, that's not necessarily a bad thing though. I mean, from what we've seen, I mean, and, and you were kind of talking, you said, uh, you know, you had a background in film. How do you think that that plays into how you shoot now? Well, uh, a lot. I mean, it's the same thing. It's just instead of one photo, it's 30 photos in a second, sometimes 130. You know, I like to do slow-mo. So to me, photography and filmmaking are exactly the same. You're telling a story. And, you know, that story could be through one, one photo or, you know, multiple uh, takes.
normally I shoot here on the left side, but um, right now I just, it looks like it's hitting pretty good nice over there. See, it's kind of, you know, unpredictable, right? So sometimes surfers usually are in one spot and they'll drift to another spot, but it's really not, they don't really go that far. They, they stay in the same area all the time. Occasionally get a couple people that drift off and you're like, oh crap, where'd they go? But <laughs> on the left hand side because it's more predictable the sets are a lot more smooth these ones on this side are a little more unpredictable but we'll see what we can get so how do you guys like this beach nice. this is really nice taking photos so I use a tripod to hold my gear in case the water comes up I just put my backpack around this thing you ever uh, come back and had found your or uh, lost your equipment you want to take it no that's her job she uh, watches it just in case you know <laughs> so you gonna go surfing what's that you gonna go surfing I'm gonna surf my wife so today I'm going to shoot on the uh, 300 mil lens. Uh, usually I like to use a 70, 200 mil. It's basic uh, f2.8. Uh, this one's fun because I get really close up in the action and uh, you get really, really uh, crystal clear images with the prime lens. What, what's your strategy with like in and out of the water? Uh, you mean going inside the water to yeah, shoot? Yeah. Well, right now I'm going to shoot outside of the water. I like to kind of go knee, you know, kind of get like knee deep. Because you know this equipment is really expensive, you don't want to get it wet. Um, I have a Outex housing, which is just, uh, it just protects the element from you know protects you from water and mud. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'm gonna put that on uh, later today. I'm probably just gonna be like waist height. Luckily, I haven't really uh, had any experiences getting anything wet, but I have the Outex housing, which uh, they 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 are uh, kind enough to hook me up with that housing. So I'm gonna go take some photos right now. I like just, I get close so. <laughs> Unpredictable. Uh, usually, when you get a good wave, there's another set, like a three of them, three or four. Uh, they usually dies off for a couple, you know, couple minutes. Sometimes there's no waves at all. <laughs> probably gonna jump in the water. I mean, the waves aren't that bad today. They're pretty small, so I'll probably just go throw on the Altex housing right now and uh, get a little closer to the action. Yeah, I, th I think I saw him. I didn't. What board is he at on right now? Uh, I'll see if I can tell who he is. Yeah, just like wave your hand, man, and I'll just be like, hey, this is him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. That way I know. Yeah, I'll go sit by him and like 
do, do one of these. Okay. Each surfer has their own board, their own design, and it's hard, you know, that's the difficult, difficult part about surf photography is trying to pinpoint your, you know, your surfer, because there's 15 guys out there and they all look the same. Inside, you know, between these barrels. It's freaking cold today, yeah, huh? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> going out at Two Street for a minute. Nice. So, I'm like, what? <laughs> so, um, it's not that bad, it's pretty mellow. Occasionally, no, there's it looks big good sets, over though. here. Yeah, it seems like there's some really big sets coming up over here, but it doesn't look hollow. It's gonna be freezing. I know, <laughs> I didn't bring my wetsuit today. It's supposed to be hot in California, but not today. See you out there. the wetsuit but today I kind of wanted to get you know a couple pictures from outside the water inside the water so I just like to keep waist deep I direct, I direct music videos and uh, visual effects, and uh, me and Cody worked on the Maroon 5 music video last year for Love Somebody. So, uh, good friend of mine, good inspiration, and uh, we worked together a lot. It was fun. Right now he's visiting from where, Washington? Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. So, 
All right, now we got some weeds. Filmmaking has always been easy for me because it's something I've been passionate about all my life, and uh, photography came second. And photography's helped me with film, so they kind of both work together in a way. Let's let's kind of start back. Um, you said you got into shooting film and and working on music videos and stuff like that. Talk about what what that's netted you and like how you've how you've turned that into something. I mean, you've obviously you were talking about earlier. We were talking about you know some of these amazing large artists that you've worked for. Um, I mean. How has that kind of fallen into place for you? Yeah. Um, well, I've definitely worked with a, a variety of artists and directors, and uh, it's I've learned a lot. You know, it's, <laughs> there's so much, you know, technical aspects that I didn't know when I was younger, and that I that I've learned over the years. And um, um, when I first started, you know, I had no idea how to shoot. I had no idea what you know uh, what lenses to use, what film stock, you know, what frame rate. Um, but that was the fun part, getting to learn how to use, you know, getting to learn, how, learning how to shoot. Uh, so yeah, okay, music has always been a passion of mine, so I've always wanted to do music videos. And when I got the opportunity to work on anything, I'd, I'd do it, you know. I had a friend call me one time, he's like, hey, I got this music video I'm doing for uh, um, Span, and I was like, all right, let's go, it's, you know, I, I, would, I was really ambitious. And I still am to this day, um, but back then, you know, it was more about trying to create art and trying to create what was our imagination and, and trying to help the director create what he envisioned. And I learned so much by working with all these people that I wanted to do it on my own. And so I got involved with a lot of like clients such as like DreamWorks Animation, um, Sony, um, lots of directors from different labels and um, variety of people. And uh, it got a little nerve wracking because I had, I had worked with like uh, some pretty high profile artists like Katy Perry and um, we had got hit up by a record label to uh, to save the music video from another company that, that just they're having a problem and uh, when I took it on um, I was really excited because it was a, a good opportunity and not only that I was able to show off my, my art and creativity and luckily it paid off because now I got an award for it um, so that's where you know where I'm now where, where, where that is that's awesome. Um, you see how the clouds are lighting, lighting right now? Like, it's really, really freaking pretty, man. Yeah. But usually on clear days, it's a little more difficult to shoot because you got the, the you know, the, the sun just glaring at you and everything's backlit. But on days like this, you kind of get this ambient look. Like, it looks like HDR, and you don't have to do any post processing. The photos just come out. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, well, what you said in the sun says it's like for sure possibly going to be pink. When it drops like right down yeah. below the horizon. And the different colors, like wait, just wait till a little later from now, the colors, that's like that bounce from that sun and just you can't replicate that. Have you tried that doing that in Idaho? <laughs> oh you're all the time. <laughs> when did you transition into photography and what kind of spurred that and what was your kind of jumping off point for you? Okay, so funny story, um, I never really was into photography at all, completely, and I never really was into surfing. Um, it was something that I got into because I was just, I fell, I fell in love with um, this photography by Sarah Lee, and she's a good friend of mine, um, and she wasn't then, but she, you know, just like you, you have inspiration that you look for in, on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know if you're like me, but I like to, you know, go on Google or Tumblr and try to find what inspires me because it kind of fuels the mind. And when I found Sarah's work, it was extremely inspiring. And I, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to go give it a shot, go outside and go, go see what's out there. So I went outside my comfort zone and that's how I discovered photography. Um, taking a picture for me is like saving a memory. and you know, I have a huge imagination as it is, so I could also manipulate it and, you know, create these worlds that don't exist and um, people, you know, tend to love, you know, art and I love sharing it and people love, you know, it, it's just a combination of things. So I ended up making good friends with Sarah and we ended up creating this uh, film together called Kainos. Uh, I, believe it's, I believe it's pronounced Kainos or Kainos. <laughs> I have to ask her, but uh, 
when we put that together, I, that was it for me. I just, I fell deeply mad in love with the water, the ocean, and that's when I started doing surf photography. Um, I figured it was a good way for me to, you know, learn more about the art of photography by putting myself into something I was passionate about. And it ended up working out. So now I go out there and it's just something I love to do and it's something I get to do with my friends and, and share it with everyone else. Definitely. So what would you say you spend more of your time doing now? I mean, you said that you're going out there pretty much every weekend shooting um, you know, photos and stuff like that. Are you just kind of splitting your time? Are you still pretty active within like filming and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, I mean every I mean every day. I, I'm full time. I'm a photographer, so I, I shoot I shoot corporate photography um, that pays the bills, and I shoot uh, surf photography for fun. Uh, it's my passion, but you know, people know me for my surf photography. So I do as much as I can. Uh, currently, it's in the winter time. It's a little hard to shoot because just the, the weather is just unpredictable out here in, in uh, Dana Point. Um, the waves weren't so good this year either. Last year around summertime, I get more light to work with. It gets darker around seven. Uh, this year it gets dark around five because uh, of daylight savings. So um, it's a seasonal kind of photography <laughs> event. Definitely. What kind of like rattles your bones? I mean, what scares you? I mean, because obviously you're, everything, you're everything working. Everything scares me. Yeah, I including mean, this interview. Because I, you know, I'm always behind the camera, like I told you, and uh, yeah. Uh, the, the biggest thing for me is taking on a job and not delivering because that's the risk. You know, you, you, nowadays there's so much competition. There's so many photographers, there's so many filmmakers and directors. And so we are always trying to push the bar. I guarantee it. You know, no matter who you are, you want to show, you want to show your best work. And I guess the biggest challenge is, you know, trying to balance everything out in your life because you want to just take it all and you want to make the world the world's best project but realistically you know it, it takes balance and, and a lot of time and um, I've learned that you gotta sleep because <laughs> if you don't sleep you know you, you just you can fall apart and uh, I've, I've experienced that a couple times <laughs> definitely so where do you I mean you're talking about with Sarah Lee you're kind of finding her inspiration stuff like that where else do you like find inspiration from? Like, what inspires you to go out and shoot? Oh, everything. I mean, I have you know, I'll be driving down the coast and I'll see a spot and I'll say, man, I really want to film there. Um, a lot of the times, my friends inspire me. Just you know, on Facebook, you know, everyone you know, travel-wise, like different parts of the world, like so many things. Vimeo.com. You know, they're every day. They're always putting their top picks. I hate myself every time I go there because I just oh, I want to work with all these people. Uh, I mean, the other day I saw this film that this kid did. He's I think 20 years old, did an entire 3D film by himself, and it's phenomenal. Wow! So that's where I find my inspiration. I feel like we can do anything that we put our mind to, and I feel that it's up to us and how much of hard work we want to put into it. My goal as a filmmaker and a photographer is to mimic forms of nature and try to show different perspective of, of elements and, and uh, models and surfing. You know what I mean? Like just trying to get what's in your mind onto a 2D picture. Like my goal is just to get my imagination and share it. That's it. So do you want to keep photography as kind of your your secondary tool that you're using and, and keep filmmaking, you know, as your, you know, your big gun, or are you wanting to switch that? I mean, where do you see yourself transitioning your photography over the next, you know, year, five years, ten years? I have no idea. I mean, it, the thing with me is I usually just do what I'm passionate about, and you know, you know, or sometimes that changes over time. Right now, I uh, I see myself never giving up photography. I, I feel like it's it's part of me and it's something I'm gonna probably do for the rest of my life. Um, currently, I do make a living from photography, so it's definitely gonna stay there. <laughs> um, but as far as uh, filmmaking goes, filmmaking and photography they're both to me the same, and I'm that's what I like to do for the rest of my life. So I'm gonna continue doing that. Well, I mean, honestly, you have a hell of a lot of ambition and you have definitely some milestones that you've hit 
for someone else that's looking to gain inspiration off of what you've created, what advice would you give to them? My advice to any photographers or filmmakers nowadays is, is do what you love. Find something you're passionate about, shoot it, and don't get overwhelmed by all the success of other people because a lot of times we get overwhelmed by how many, you know, how much competition is out there, like, oh, I'm not good enough. It, but honestly, it's, it's like 50% talent and 50% luck. It really is, you can capture one of the best images and not even know about it. I mean, I've had one of the pictures, one of my favorite photos, uh, I never showed anyone, I published it, everyone didn't like it. <laughs> but then you got a photo that I don't like and I publish and everyone loves it. You know, it's, it's kind of, it, it's, it's, it's what you want to do and what you want to do as a person and, and as a creative person, you, my advice is just do what you love. Simple as that. And your success usually comes from, you know, out of nowhere if you just keep going. Perfect. Surf photography is just something I'm passionate about and I plan on doing it for the rest of my life and I do want to learn how to surf a little better. I started uh, last year and I'm not very good. So, I tend to, uh, need to practice there. Um, definitely would like to uh, travel a little more, go to different cold, a couple of new places and try to meet some new surf uh, photographers as well to network with and come up with uh, some, new, some new work this year. I think nowadays there's no secrets. If you're hiding something, you know, it's just, it's pointless. I feel like we should share our creative process a lot more nowadays. Um, I feel like it's a great way for us to actually network and communicate with people. I mean, if I have a, if I have come up with some new technique and I share it with everyone, you know, people are going to recognize you for that technique. Um, people that hide it, you know, someone else is going to invent it eventually. And why would you want to, you know, hold on to something and then have someone else, you know, figure that out? Like, figure it out. It, uh, to me, I, I like to share my my knowledge in the creative process. And I also like to share my knowledge in photography and videography because at one point I wasn't very good and I needed help and you know there wasn't that many artists or photographers out there to help me. So when there was though, I, w I was very, very, you know, thankful and it does help. So a lot, a lot of people ask me, they're like, okay, well, why, why are you shooting surf photography if you've worked with Katy Perry and, you know, Foster the People and you know all these bands and DreamWorks and I, you know I tell them like look it's not about the name it's not about the money it's it's more about how passionate I am as an artist and when I tell people that they just think I'm crazy I mean I, I, I tend to do this for fun and the good thing about doing it for fun is I actually got hired <laughs> um, and the bigger clients I ended up getting because of uh, Gosh, I would, I would shoot something for fun and upload it to Vimeo or 500 Picks and someone would recognize it and then say, hey, we got this project you want to work on. And I was like, all right, yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's how I'd reel in my clients, you know, just from my artwork. And I think that the, the bigger the jobs got, it didn't change anything. It just, it made, it, for me, it was just the same thing, just with more people. Um, and it does get very, like, you know, for me, it was kind of a, a surreal feeling when I was at the VMAs uh, last year with Kelsey Fields, because uh, I was working with you know so many artists at the time like Skrillex and uh, Bruno Mars and just having all those people, all those creative people around you all the time and working with them, it, it was just insane. I mean, I was able to, you know, we were we were always creating new ideas and new concepts, and they were out of this world. So. That's the fun part, you know, getting getting together with more successful creative people and putting them all in, in one room. And, um, that you know, it's, it's it just gets crazy. <laughs> when I first started doing this, I uh, I was really obsessed with the idea of going to college and getting a degree in art. And so I told my family, I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to I want to be an artist. So I want to go to school. Um, didn't work out. I uh, I lasted one week in art school, and it was because I, I just I was so fast paced. I, I couldn't understand why everyone was going so slow. And I don't know if that's just me or if I just was too passionate or something. But when I was in art school, 
the, the learning curve was just, okay, we're gonna learn this in three years. Oh, we're gonna do this now. We're gonna draw circles and get better at them. Like, to me, it was kind of pointless. And I, I already knew what I wanted to do, so I decided, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna try to find a job doing what I love. And um, a couple weeks later, I ended up getting a job at this company called Rhythm and Hue Studios. And um, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but the, the guy that hired me was confident in me and he said, oh, you'll learn, we'll, we'll teach you. And I got my experience through uh, working for some pretty good companies. Um, and if I could go back in time, I would probably have not gotten to, I probably wouldn't have went to art school. I would probably went to a university um, and got a degree, just a basic degree, and then did art on the side. Because for me, an art degree was more of a in my head kind of idea of concept. Like I felt like you needed it to be an artist, and you don't. You just need to be able to have a camera and a lens and some time and shoot some stuff and practice and make get some experience. As a photographer, uh, most of my inspiration is just, it, it comes from, you know, films I see and I get so lost in, inside some of these ideas that I come up with after watching these, these you know, these movies that uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll sketch them out and I'll, I'll plan them and I'll shoot them. And half the time they never come out the way I wanted them to. But uh, I get most of my, my kick in photography when, when people just end up liking and sharing it. Cause it's just kind of an egotistic thing, you know? It's like, oh, people are sharing my stuff. Like, this is great, I must be doing something right. Um, but yeah, when, when you inspire other people, I'd have to say I did my job, that's it. I just, I think a, a photo can say, you know, a lot of things and if you take the right photo, it can tell a story and if you take a photo that maybe someone looks at and they say, wow, I want to go in the water now. Like, cause that's what happened to me. You know, I, I saw photos and I was like, I want to go in the water and now I'm, the one kicking out the photos to everyone. And, um, for me, that's what I love. It's just when other people tend to fall in love with my work and get inspired to do similar stuff, so. Yeah, sunset is like my favorite time to shoot. I like to shoot backlit photos. Um, it's a little different, you know, you don't get to see that much details. Uh, occasionally, you know, I'll get lucky in the daytime and get, you know, a shot where I can see the surfer and, the, and everything in the background. If you're a photographer, I like you to know, try to do things that are different, get different perspective. Um, my favorite thing is, you know, the riskier, <laughs> the better photo you're gonna get. So I like to, you know, take take some challenges and you know go to different places, try to find, make new friends. Um, but the best part about photography is trying to capture the moment, trying to try to capture, you know, someone doing something for the first time, uh, or maybe it's. A 360 a backflip you know there's always something new and fresh today we've been you know right now we're, we're just waiting around trying to get the shot you know uh, I got a couple good ones so I'm, I'm a little happy about that uh, half the time though you know the weather and you know the waves are unpredictable but that's the best part about surf photography is you never know what's gonna happen next and uh, nature kind of is, is is in charge so you got to be careful and uh, well a couple times that uh, you know I've had a I've been, when I'm out there with the guy shooting in the barrel, a uh, couple large waves, it gets a little crazy. Uh, but that's what the fun part is, you know? Trying to get uh, trying to get that picture that no one else has seen before. And then also, you know, just the, just being out here with friends and, you know, having a good time. It's freaking cold. It is freaking yeah. cold. <laughs> I wish I had a heater, or like, I wish I brought my wetsuit or something, but. <laughs> How was it out there? Good! <laughs> Bigger than it looks! <laughs> it's It's been, well, I guess the sets have been kind of random. I mean, it's like yeah. small, 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 and then all of a sudden... It's really bam. good though. I caught one little left and then I yeah. was just being a wuss. I, would, I wouldn't go into the beat. Um, yeah, the battery's dead. I guess we gotta go home now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a wrap for today. Uh, this is Salt Creek in Dana Point. Uh, best place in the world, man. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Dotson. I'm a surf photographer and filmmaker, and I've been framed. <laughs>